Alright guys, so we're out here on a walk-in freezer that's not working right. And you can hear it running inside, the fans aren't on. I'll be honest, I think just to make it quick and easy, I think it's uh, low on refrigerant. If you look at the uh, sight glass down here, it uh, looks like it might just have a couple bubbles, but I think our real thing is we are just plumb empty. So we've got a pretty good sized leak I would say or to all of a sudden do that. I know this place has had a tendency to leak uh, and just accumulate, you know, you know, finally over time, eventually run out. But that seems like quite a bit. So we're gonna do uh, just a quick look inside here, make sure there's nothing gonna get lost right away. I'm gonna guesstimate that it's probably the evaporator. That's generally where it's at most of the time anyway. But we're gonna pop this top, take a look just to make certain. I can tell the coil there is pretty, looks like it's dirty, but let me uh, pop this top and take a look inside there. I mean, it looks a little bit oily in there. I mean, that, that don't look good right there, you know what I'm saying? I can't help but think that we've had some issues, but I can't tell if that was from a previous problem or what. I don't want to juice it up and then have to pull it back out, you know? I'm going to do a scan here and see what we got. Because if it's big enough, it should go off. Let's see if we can find a disconnect. That's probably optional on this model. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's it. Down there on the ground. That does me a lot of good down there, don't it? We just gauged up on it. Suctions are right in the 21, but the head's kind of low running right in there at 46 degrees so yeah we're running pretty low head this uh, does not have a head pressure control on it I don't know how they've been maintaining okay I mean it got potentially either that's a high pressure or that's a uh, fan cycle there but I'm not sure how they've been running this thing without one because the fans obviously not shutting off I don't know. I'll have to check to see how that's wired because I you usually will have a head pressure control or you have a fan cycle, one or the other. I don't know how in the heck they could be running that without it. This one here is the cooler. And can't hardly see in there to see if it's got a head pressure control valve or not. I don't see a, see one in there. I don't know how the hell that's working. Yeah, it's um, quite interesting that that's running without it. Problem is, it's been in for a long time. Really uh, kind of shady to now say something, huh? Clock don't look like it even turns. That's that's great. That's just a high pressure switch. That's it. Nothing. And that thing. I guess you can kind of turn it. Ain't the easiest thing in the world to turn. I don't know why in the world they don't have one though. We're scanning all over and I'm not finding anything in there. Pressure's not real high. I valved it off or I opened it up. I only got 50 pounds on each side. I valved, uh, opened up the valves. So let's go inside. I don't like what I'm seeing though. I mean, Fan running continuously with uh, no low ambient kit on it, that's gonna cause it to be low naturally. So, but still, it's, uh, this this is really annoying because people don't clean up their mess. If that's maybe a compressor change out or something, maybe that's what caused it, who knows. All right, so well, I didn't know about the bone miser control. I've seen them before, but I didn't realize they could be ran with low head pressure. So let's go in here and see if they've got one on the evaporator when we look for the leak. I started getting a ramp up there when I came in. So the bone miser there, the sensing bulb literally goes in the refrigerant. So if you pull that thing out of there, you'll blow refrigerant everywhere. 
and most TXVs usually need about a hundred pound drop across them to work and function properly. Bone misers don't, so you're going to charge it just till you get a full sight glass and you know maybe a little extra just like normal, uh, especially for outdoor temperatures. But I was wondering what was going on, and honestly, these were not real popular. You got to remember, I've only been deep into refrigerant. I've only been deep into refrigeration for about the last seven years, and you usually only see this on you know some of the bigger systems, even though this isn't big. But still, um, I do see a lot of oily looking substance I bet up there let's see if that's got anything on it so anyhow the um, there's a good chance that it may not be as low as what it seems well I'm gonna see if I can get over here between the kegs here and see if we can find a leak but chances are there's a good chance that uh, that's just a little low all right one and one came together I'm like wait a minute this can't be a freezer they wouldn't have beer in here. I mean, yeah, we like to run it cold, but not that freaking cold. So anyhow, this it did say walking cooler on my uh, sheet. And we've got a little orange there and a little purple, 502, 404, and a little green there. So it's, for us, we're gonna, we would have used 404 on this. It does have PoE oil on the compressor out there. So we're gonna go ahead and finish scanning this thing over. See if we can find anything here, but a lot of times they'll leak on that uh, TXV sensing bulb. All right, let's get this thing cleaned up. All right, so that looks a lot better than what it did. There's a little bit of crud on there, but we're not going for a Tosma haul here today. That uh, looks a whole lot better than what it did. I did not find any leaks, uh, so it's got to be outside is what I'm assuming. Let's go out and see if we can find anything once we get it juiced back up. All right, so far eight ounces in there. You can see the sight glass is changing already. Head pressure's already jumping, so I mean, it may not be that low. Go ahead and uh, get a little more in there and we'll see where we're at when we're done. You can see down there like where the leak probably would be at. It uh, would not surprise me if it's outside here. That oil came from somewhere over there. That compressor valves don't sound all that great. You hear it definitely chugging a little bit not going in very quick so i mean it's getting a little bit of liquid but we've got the uh, accumulator there attacking it for the most part i didn't dump it in like full bore about almost a pound and a half i have a feeling when we go grab the detector again we'll start getting a, a hit on that i'll kill the fan maybe run the head pressure up and see see where it comes in at Okay, we're checking our superheat. You know, obviously we've got a little bit of frost on the lines, which is usually something some people flip out about. But we're running an 18 degree superheat. So we're definitely not flooding back. I mean, it obviously got a little liquid when we were doing it. It's starting to fade away there, but a little hungry. I have a bad feeling we definitely got a leak at four, almost four and a half pounds. So we're gonna get the detector out and scan it. We're like 260, the condenser's dirty. You know, it's middle of winter though. I'm not worried about that right at the moment. It, uh, the equipment needs to be uh, PM badly, but they it doesn't happen. It's uh, probably 40 some degrees out here. That's running, there's no economizer on it. Sight glass is full. So let's grab the detector, hopefully I can find something. It's really, really windy out here, there's nothing half shot. You can see the trees wiggling, stuff like that. I mean, it's definitely windy out here. So far, I haven't hit anything yet. I mean, 
mean, yeah, it's windy, the fan's blowing, but I should get at least a sniff. Sometimes you'll get it in the pressure switch bellows there. It's just, it's too flipping windy out here today. You're not gonna catch anything. I've been down on both sides here. Not getting anything. And with that wind being like it is uh, from the fan, I mean, it could blow it all over. I'm gonna go ahead and kill it real quick, see if I can get it while it's uh, fan's not running. I even scanned it over with the Whisper, didn't catch anything at all. I mean, I don't hear any wind with this thing, which is kind of nice. Uh, I've done reviews on that and my other one a couple times so far. This is one of those instances where it really comes in handy. Biggest thing with these is get better headphones. I prefer the in-ear monitor type headphones. Those there are not very good to come with it, but they put the money and the engineering into the device, not the headphones that they bought aftermarket. So just something to get you started. Uh, at this point, guys, I don't know what else to do with it. I'm just going to have to run it. We'll have to notate that, hey, it's got issues. There's a good chance we've got a leak. And uh, we'll have to deal with it. Hopefully it'll be warmer when, uh, or not warmer, hopefully it'll be a little less windy to where we might actually be able to find it. So I don't know what else to do. Let's go downstairs and see how things are going down there. Okay, let's go in the back door because I swear this thing went off when I went in last time. going off and we zeroed outside I'm thinking this thing's probably been skating by somehow with the other cooler being in front of it and it just uh, got by I guess I have no idea but anyhow we got to road up it's uh, probably got a leak somewhere if I asked I have a leak somewhere not a whole lot I can do about it so anyhow it's gonna wrap this one up guys till next time we'll catch you on the next one all right so we got us a walking cooler it's warm it's blowing obviously and checking the back here the coils are looking a little bit uh, disturbed I'm not be surprised if this thing is leaking or not you see it's in pretty bad shape so is the uh, insulation and stuff like that it's, uh, run plenty low enough all right so it's clicking let's go up on the roof see if it's running okay it looks like we found it clock's looking pretty good but just like we figured we can get over here without tripping and falling off the side of the roof. We are low on refrigerant. And it's cold out, so it compounds the issue. Uh, refrigerant 404 is what it says. Let's go ahead and get our juice back up and uh, see what we uh, will be fine for leaks after we get done here. Got it uh, gauged up. See what kind of temperatures we're running there. Definitely lows. All right, so we just turned solid, and uh, we haven't added anything additional yet to pass solid. And you can see what we're running here, right around that 180 mark, which is where a lot of our headmasters are at. Which is about an 81 degree condensing temperature. We're right at two pounds nine ounces, which just isn't a very big system. We're doggone close to about some of our coldest temperatures. We're going to get down to zero, maybe just a little bit of negatives. So there's going to be a little more that we're going to need to add for, you know, the extremest cold days. We're going to add a 
10 to 15 percent over what you know would normally be the total during uh, normal temperatures. But uh, in this case here, we have about two and a half pounds there, and I would say this probably holds maybe four pounds area. I'd say maybe up to as much as an extra pound here, maybe a little less. It's just one of them little tricky things. We'll just go ahead and watch, watch it in and see where we're at. All right, we threw it into a pump down, which really didn't go down very far. Barely 14 pounds. And it shut off. Let's see where we're at on our chart here. Yeah, we ain't got much of a differential from what I can see there. I'm going to heat up my uh, receiver there and see where we're at. And then uh, see how we're charged from that point. Kind of cheat a little bit today. All right, so we made a little adjustment to the differential. It's rose up to, or it's risen up to nine. It's a little bit better than 15. I went ahead and figured out my level on my receiver, which was about three quarters of the way. We're gonna go ahead and start looking, see if we can find a leak. It's uh, not easy to find. We can always come back later. It's the uh, end of the day, and we're just gonna get them going. So just flipped the switch and got her into it. So let's go ahead and grab the leak detector and let's take a look. All right, so we got the lights off in here. Oh, she's starting to go berserker now. She ain't happy. Yeah, she's not happy. It's so cold, I think it's just... I don't know. So, anyhow, we get up here and you can see that the pan's rotting out. But if you get in here to that flare nut, get down here on this flare nut here, right there and you can see she don't like it that should be an easy one to fix just tighten that flare nut up and as you can tell this freaking coils about shot to hell and back and i think that's what i was picking up when i was back here i think it's picking up the floaties coming from the uh that area there i think that's what it was picking it up so, yeah, ah, my phone's not doing so good. Yeah, I'm gonna say, that's great. Can't see nothing. All right, there we go. So we're gonna tighten that thing up, see if we can blow this nasty drain out because that thing's got bad days going on too. That must drain into a bucket or something. I ain't sure what the story is on that. But we'll uh, see if we can get that thing cleaned out.